Welcome to the Michigan Golfer Show. Join us each week as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our great game. We're going to talk a little bit now about the book that Michael Patrick Shields helped the American Society of Golf Course Architects create. It's called Secrets of the Great Golf Course Architects. So, Michael, uh, as you recall, I, I came to you uh, as president of the American Society of Golf Course Architects at that time. And uh, as president, you're always looking for a project that kind of <laughs> signifies your presidency. And I've been a golf course architect long enough to know that each day can be so different. Originally, the concept was a day in the life of a golf course architect. And uh, we wanted to go to each architect and say, okay, what was the most memorable day of your career? I mean, what was a really crazy day? Uh, I had the honor of dedicating the book to Bruce Borland, who uh, certainly his most memorable day was the day he went on the flight with Payne Stewart and uh, they were going to look at a site. And of course, you probably know the, the tragedy of that uh, horrific day back in 1999. So uh, I really wanted to honor him on certainly a, a dreadful day in his life as a golf course architect. Tell us a little bit about how you saw the book and some of the fun that you had perhaps interviewing all of these different golf course architect personalities. Well, I was honored that you came back to me again to write a second book and somewhat surprised. <laughs> <laughs> But because uh, I was blessed to be able to spend so many days with Mr. Hills and your firm seeing what happens, I did get an inside look at what it's like. And it's not all sitting at the drawing board or the CAD cam or whatever. I mean, there, this is, these are human people dealing with clients and builders. And so that, to me, was very fascinating. And to go, and I think we have 130 architects, something like that. The premise that I went on is if I were to bump into somebody at an airport bar, which is pretty likely to happen. And I said, what do you do for a living? You know, when you're making small talk, and they said they were a golf course architect, what kind of stories would you tell? And you probably wouldn't tell somebody next to you at a bar about, you know, uh, how many cubic yards of dirt or displacement or, you know, different types of grass. You'd probably tell a story about a client you dealt with or a, a place in an international destination that was politically intriguing or trouble that you had. And so that's what the book is full of. And to that point, while the works of art has lots of beautiful photographs, uh, Secrets of the Great Golf Course Architects has hand-drawn renderings for the most part by the artists that these architects are. And so we could see what was in their mind, what was on the paper, and then occasionally a photograph to match up to it. But to hear stories of, uh, you know, in working in China or working at a place where uh, it was very difficult to get to, like some of the courses that you built. And I'm happy to say I think three of the four pictures on the cover are, are your works, if I'm not mistaken. I think at least two of them are. Yes, sir. I see uh, Bay Harbor. Uh, the Yes, exactly. Iron Bridge out in Colorado. And I don't know how you built, I mean, that's another one where you're climbing to the top of a, the world to get to. You're mountaineering in a cart to get up to some of those holes. And that was one that Art was involved in. What are your recollections of Iron Bridge out in Colorado? Exactly. Well, Michael, uh, we'll wrap up this session. We uh, really have appreciated the relationship that we've had, and we hope to continue it in, in uh, years to come. Uh, and best wishes with your radio career. Uh, I just love listening to your smooth tones and your yeah. tremendous uh, diplomatic <laughs> interview skills that, that I'm taking notes. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Sean.
I was his producer and, and he changed my life as a young person and you changed my life and you, Steve, as a young person too. And I'm, in, uh, I'm grateful to you forever. I love you both. And you just described yourself, you know. You're a Hall of Famer, too. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much.